Hi, it's Melanie Dagnall, the artist behind Brown Eyes Fine Art, and this video is a portion of a whip of Buster. Buster is done on a pastel matte paper with pastel pencils. I've used all three brands of Faber-Castell, Pitt, Derwent, and Caran d'Ache pastel pencils. This is a 12 by 16, and this is a commissioned piece, and it's been going to be given as a gift. So I'm very excited to get this finished and get this off so it can be given. In this particular video, which is a work in progress of Buster, uh, this particular 12 by 16 pastel drawing is being done with um, Derwent, which you'll see represented by the red pencil, and uh, Faber-Castell Pit, which you'll see as a natural color um, pencil on the outside like a wood casing. And I am doing the left sleeve on Buster, creating the different creases and the highlights of the shirt um, to make it look more natural. So of course the highlights are done in a lighter green and then the shading is done in a darker green and then there's a medium green. So there's a total of four different green colors being used. And then later on, as once I get all the layers in, which I'm using a very light hand, as you'll see as the video progresses, there are several layers that go into this, just this portion of the sleeve. But you'll also see that in some of the darker areas, I accent them with a regular colored pencil, and those are polychromos. Um, you'll see me using both a black and a brown polychromos pencil to help out um, accenting some of the shaded areas. Again, I'm going over very lightly with, with a light touch. The shaded areas actually have two different color greens in them. Um, this particular tool that you see me using right now is a pastel blender. It has a soft rubber end to it that I use to blend the different colors in to make it look like a more natural transition between each shade. Now the particular paper that I prefer to use with my pastel drawings is called a pastel matte and it's like has a sandy texture to it which helps the pastel pigment stick to the paper. So again to be able to lay down several layers even though this is a very textured paper you want to use a, a light hand um, not not as light as you would would have to say with colored pencils pastels go down pretty easy but you still don't want to be very forceful on it so you'll be able to do more blending and more layers um, here on this particular uh, white check mark type of design um, i'm using white and gray gray is for the darker colors um, for represent the shading on the check and that again is the blending tool. I need the shirt or the, the sports jersey, I believe it's a football sports jersey on Buster, to um, look both a little worn near the um, stitching, but also to have a sheen to it. And there I'm putting the stitch marks on the white check or white pattern on the side of the sleeve. To get the really smooth, realistic looking patterns, you have to use a lot of layers, a lot of blending, and that's what I'm doing here. There's the black pencil that I mentioned, the polychromos, to help darken some of the areas. 
In some of the shadows, I also use the black pastel. Then I usually go over the pencil again with pastel and then blend it in. When creating uh, fabrics, pay close attention to your reference photo to find the different shades that represent ruffles and wrinkles. And also to make sure that you're putting them in a way that represents how it's actually being worn on the subject, not just randomly, because there's actually a pattern to it depending how it's laying on the body. So here I went into the yellow color that's on the edge of the sleeve. And I believe I used four different color yellows to bring in the highlighted and the shadows. so that it does look like the um, edge of the sleeve also follows the direction of the fabric in the shirt sleeve as well. That yellow one, light yellow one is of course the highlights. And you'll, you'll find more light hits the top edge of the, the bottom of the sleeve because it is a separate piece of fabric and sticks up a little bit. So that part will reflect more light than the uh, rest of it. And it gives it a 3D look. Now this area down here helps with showing how the sleeve starts to get form fitting onto the dog's front right leg. Or as we're looking at it, the left leg. And you'll watch as these little areas progress with the shading and the highlights into something that once again looks more 3D and natural and real than a flat piece to 2D piece of paper. And again, I'm following the reference photo as closely as possible. Now Buster is a commissioned piece and it is going to be a gift for um, a very surprised recipient. And it's always nice to have a little um, video and some um, whip drawings as well to go along with the the original drawing that's given. It's always nice to see your drawing get created. So in all of my commission drawings, I, I also add a, a disc with some of the whip photos and a portion of the video, depending on how much will fit on the disc. So now that I got all the base of color drawn in, I'm going to start adding highlights and shadows that help give it the 3D look. And I do those also in layers, and then I blend them. There's the use of the polychromo brown pencil to help out with the shadow.
So again, I'm using uh, two different brands of pastel pencils. The red one that you see there is the Derwent. And then the more natural wood core looking pencil is the Faber-Castell Pit. As I progress down into the fur, I'll also be using the Caran d'Ache pastel pencils. Um, the only preference I have in using them is the colors that I need. And the three different sets provide different colors. Otherwise, all three are a really great brand. The Caran d'Ache is are a little little bit, well, maybe a lot softer than the other two. So in some applications they more, may work better, uh, whereas maybe the, the more medium core pastel pencils work better for certain applications as well. I found when I'm doing real detailed work like in eyes, on the eyes and noses, that I prefer the, the harder um, Derwent and Faber-Castell pastel pencils. Um, when I'm doing larger areas where more blending and I guess bleeding of color is what I'm looking for, then I prefer the Caran d'Ache. So as you can see, the, the ripples are now starting to take on a 3D look and becoming form-fitted around the leg of the dog. Just takes a lot of patience and, and working and reworking and blending and layering and paying close attention to the reference photo. There's the gray going over the white to give it a shadow. I find when I'm working with pastels, if I'm going to use a colored pencil, that I prefer to use the wax-based pencils, um, the Luminous or the Polychromos. It's just my personal preference. So when I'm adding shadows to white, I, I stick to the cooler colors, like the cooler grays and the blacks. When I'm adding shadows to the yellow, I'll stick to a warmer color like the brown. And then depending on what type of shadow I'm trying to get from the green, I will use um, either a warm brown or the cooler black. On this whip we're going to see the completion of the shirt sleeve as we're seeing here and then a portion of Buster's leg just below the sleeve. I'm reworking the highlights and the shadows. When um, doing a, a shirt or fabric versus a fur, I will do different pencil strokes. Um, when filling in the larger areas of the, the shirt, I have a tendency to do small circles. Unless I'm, I'm trying to get an actual direction, and then um, I'll still do circles, but I'll do them in the direction that I want the fabric to look. When doing fur, I usually do uh, pencil strokes in the direction of the fur. Especially with the longer haired dogs. As I don't want a circle pattern showing. So here we're starting on the fur 
and I start with a, the darker baser colors with pastels. So this is a blonde dog so the base color would be a darker tan and then I'm putting also of course the shadow that the uh, the shirt creates on the the dog's fur where it meets it. Like with most drawings, you make sure you put your background in first, and then uh, when you're doing the subject, the little wispy hairs of dogs will go out into the background, make it look more real. It doesn't look like something was just placed on the background and, and nothing is coming off of the, the subject, like a cropped photo. That's the blending tool. Blending in the uh, shadows under the shirt where it meets the highlight of the dog's fur. And then blending in the different strands of hair as well. And I'll blend over it and then I'll start again and add fur back in. The Caran d'Ache pencil also has a natural wood looking. That's the Caran d'Ache right there that I'm using. I really love the blonde color that they have. And since the dog has a lot of that blonde and uh, I need to blend it very well. It's, it's a great pencil for this particular coat. And since I'm not doing real, real detail work, I don't really need a very sharp point, which is good because as soft as the Caran d'Ache's lead is, they, they break easily when being sharpened. So I'm adding in some of the base again. The dark shading in between the pieces of fur as it lays on the dog's arm that shows different layers of the coat. And then redoing some areas where the light color of the fur encroached on the shirt. So you will see the reference photo. There he is, Buster. That's where I am right now on the whip. And as always, until next time, live, laugh, and create. This is Melanie Dagnall, the artist behind Brown Eyes Fine Art.